Now your prompts can be as long as you want near infinite thanks to this new approach called recursive language models which enable you to choose any language model and make it unlimited in context size window so you're no longer worried about your prompt size and also being worried about if your performance getting deteriorated as your prompts is getting longer in this video i'm going to show you how this open solution works and how you can use it in action let's check it out before I get into the codes and how we can use it right now in the GitHub repo, I want to talk about the challenges that this solution is focusing on and what is the solution or how they're resolving it. The first challenge is that as you use different language models, there's a limit on the context size. For example, with GPT-5 here, maximum with, let's say here, 260K, you can have the length of the prompt getting into the model. So you can no longer have longer prompts if you have in your use case because the model cannot handle that so how they're fixing it and make it much more longer near infinite as they're noting second when we're using longer prompts with language models we have seen across almost all the models that their performance is getting worse so it's better to keep your prompts smaller so you can keep the performance of the language model but obviously sometimes our prompts are long enough i i cannot make it smaller and if it's long, unfortunately, you're going to lose some performance. So check this actually chart they're showcasing. When you're using GPT-5 as is with different use cases, different, let's say, reasoning or coding task stuff, you can see that, first of all, they can not test the model with more than this amount of length because there's a context size limit. And second, as they are increasing the size from, let's say, 8K token all the way to 260 or 262, the performance score is getting worse. And there's a significant drop after 33, uh, 33k token. And if you can see on the right side, which is this recursive language model approach that they applied on GPT-5, which I'm going to tell you what it is, you can see that not only you can have longer prompts being used with this model, let's say here 1 million, just as a test, but also that degradation of performance, which was the sudden drop here, is disappeared. So that means... Two challenges. First, the prompts can be get longer, fixed. Second, there's no deterioration in performance as the prompts are getting larger and larger. But what is this RLM and how they enable this on GPT-5 as an example? They're noting that in their approach, which is recursive language model, they treat the prompt, that long prompt that you have, as part of the environment. So in Python, we have environment variables that we can specify with a given code. And what they do is that they consider your prompt as an environment and i'm going to tell you why so they load this input prompt which is pretty long as a variable inside the python rel environment and write code to pick into decompose and invoke itself recursively over programmatic snippets of the variable so let's make it simple what they do is that they give that prompt in a way to the model that the model can interact with the prompt through coding so the model instead of seeing all the prompt the model generate codes to parse the prompt or extract a specific part of the prompt, merge the prompt. So with having this coding-based capability to interact with the prompt, I no longer need to print all the prompt text which is long and doesn't fit to the model for the model. Let's go through an example. Uh, this is our initial prompt that is pretty long and we're saying that you are reading an extremely long book. Can you list all out all which items that were made before the grade, blah, blah, blah. So this is the prompt, but obviously I'm not going to give all this prompt to language model. I gonna let RLM approach handle this. So how it works, they're gonna give some system prompt, which I'm gonna tell you what that system prompt is, to the language model and tell that, hey, there is a prompt, you're not, you're not going to see all of that, it's pretty long, but you can code to interact with it, and here's the query. So what language model does, it generates some code. You can see that the language model decided to split that prompt to two parts based on the keyword called chapter because maybe in somewhere in the prompt we were talking about chapter one and two so it knows that okay i need to split that prompt to two chapters and then for each chapter it calls the llm separately now the prompts is almost half and then after that the final answer should be merged based on multiple sub calls to the language model so what we did we generated this code by language model we parse the prompt using the code that language model generated and then we merge all these sub calls together to give the final answer back so that means if your language model cannot let's say generate more than 10k output token 
that's fine you can have millions of output tokens because you're merging these sub calls so it's sort of an agentic approach that you are parsing the prompt using code instead of just printing all of that based on the depths that you or the model specify which was here as an example we got the prompt we split it in two sub calls chapter one and chapter two we call the language model and then they merge the final outcome all the way back together all right, so how about the performance of the results of RLM compared to not using RLM? And here's the answer. For this paper, they actually benchmark GPT-5 and Quinn. And again, you can apply this to any model. And you can see that they apply that for different tasks. Let's say code question answer, browse, and OO long, OO long with pairs, which is a little bit more complex. So each of these tasks, they have different range of input token in the prompt from 23K up to 4 million. In some tasks, they use up to 11 million token. Obviously, Quinn or GPT-5 by themselves cannot handle that amount of prompt. There's, there's limit on context size. But with RLM approach that I described, they were able to apply this. And if you see the results, you can see that almost all the time, RLM is the one that has the highest score compared to the others. And here we can see the average price with standard deviation that shows in some cases, RLM can be even cheaper or close to the base model. In some cases, RLM can be more expensive because of recursive subcalls, but it really depends on how smart your model is. If GPT-5 is smaller than Quinn as an example, maybe it can answer that long prompt question with two or three sub calls instead of just recursively calling that this is literally the caveat of this approach you need to be cautious about the cost specifically in complex and recursive calls but in general two benefits which is unlimited context size and no deterioration of performance are the main two gains that you get out of this solution but here's the critical question how does llm knows that it should interact with the prompt through code like calling that having those recursive calls and then generating some sub calls and merging all those stuff without seeing the full prompt well here's the key instead of giving your long prompt which is your initial prompt rlm approach initiate a system prompt which is the default of all these rlm calls and they have added that system prompt in the paper i will add the link to the paper and also the github repo of their code that are going to walk through that shortly inside this code channel and the Discord channel link is on the video description below when you go to the channel click on the reference section you will see the reference of all the videos including this one that i have recorded so in the system prompt that they have added they're telling to the llm that you are tasked with answering query with associated context you can access transform and analyze this context interactively in a ripple environment this is the key part that we're letting llm knows that how it can interact with the prompt that is coming in from the user which is that very long prompt and then we are specifying some environments that you're saying that, hey, your context type is this, this is the total lens, and you can initialize this environment with context, which is a variable that contains extremely important information. You have LLM query, which is the function that allows you to query an LLM, and then you have uh, the ability to use print statement to view the output of your Ripple code. So a Ripple code is like terminal. When you code and hit enter, you execute the code and see the results. Technically, we are specifying these environment variables, one, two, three, so that language model can use like agentic approach to interact with the prompt through coding it. And I'm gonna, I don't wanna go through and read through all this uh, meta prompt, but they have added some examples, some meta learning here to make sure that prompt fully works and you can simply just copy paste or use the open source code, which I'm gonna share with you shortly. To make sure we fully understand your approach, I want to walk through in one of the examples they mentioned in their paper. They have added a couple of them. So this one, I will find it more uh, straightforward than easier to understand. So you can technically read the rest of the paper to understand much more examples. But here they're saying that this example they tested, that was the cost. And in this task, the agent must find the answers to the following multi-hop query given a corpus of 100 unique documents. So imagine you have a prompt that has 8 million tokens. And this prompt has unique documents about a given topic. Let's say here's a specific dish. And these evidence documents, the, the language model should navigate through them to propose answers for this query that the user provide. But obviously, it should handle somehow this 8 million token prompt using RLM. And here we're using, again, GPT-5, which has just 26K token limit. So how are we going to fit in that 8 million using RLM? So here's the document. This vegetable stew uses fish, but adding meat is possible. So it has some information about the culture, the root, and uh, some ingredients out of this stew. I don't want to read through all of that, but what is step one? 
We are not going to give this 8 million token to GPT-5. We are giving that meta prompt that I just talked about so the LLM can interact with this prompt through code. Now, GPT-5 first decided to probe the, at the 100 token uh, document list with regex queries. So this is a code that GPT-5 generate using regex to filter out some part of the prompt to make sub, some sub calls to language model. It has some prior priors about these events as shown from its particular choice of word it looks for, because you want to check that in the code. But it also looks for specific keywords in the prompt, like, like beauty, pageants, and festivals. So based on the question that you ask, it's going to filter the prompt based on these keywords. How? Using this code that GPT-5 generated. So you can see that it is searching for some keywords and using regex and the keywords, it tried to create some chunks out of that 8 million initial prompt that we had. Then after running its regex queries, the root LM finds an interesting snippet on the chunk at index 6. So assume that index 6, which was in specific chunks after this code, got some really informative information. So it launches recursive language model calls over this snippet to look for the information relevant to the original query. So that recursive approach getting it generated right now. The RLM is able to both store this information in a variable answer 6 as well as print this information out for the root LM to see. So as soon as we call these recursive calls, we save this intermediate result somewhere so later on we can use it for another call or merge them at the end. The sub LM calls find the answers likely Maria Del Macchio based on again what was the query about and it stores the information back to the root language models environment. So you can see that now we have this query information and the response is getting batched based on these sub calls. And then at step three, after checking the information above, the root LM reasons that it has enough information to answer the query. The root LM chooses to check the answer again with two additional recursive LM calls to confirm that its answer aligns with its check. Finally, the root LM returns its final answer, which is the correct one. So you could see that with these multiple codes that the language model was generating, it was parsing the prompt multiple times to get the final answer back, regardless of how the big was the prompt and at the same time because we didn't fit in 8 million token each chunk that we parsed was let's say 10k or 20k so we are in the golden ratio of the context size of the given language model that we never lose the performance because of that lengthy prompt so we got the highest performance of the model without hitting the token limit and some good news if you want to test a solution you don't need to code what i just explained because they have released the open source github repo of rlm i'll add again the link of this github repo to the discord channel in video description below but what they're providing is that a nice way that you can quickly install this package as soon as you install there's a quick start you can check that python code or we're just importing rlm with the backend as of now open ai with providing your open ai key you can then start actually asking your question whatever long prompt that you have and that a recursive approach get generated on backend as you're using rlm obviously you need to also choose your model name here from openai which is upc5 nano was chosen as an example lastly the nice option they provide is that if you want to visualize the traces of these recursive language model approach you can enable that with actually initializing this visualizer with npm run dev under this path then you can also have that json file that includes some um, a visualization that you can print out to see how this RLM approach is uh, recursively calling language model to give the final answer back over to you. All right, that was the video about recursive language models. I hope you found this video helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and make sure you share your thoughts, questions in comment section below and subscribe so you don't miss the next video. Thank you so much.